So I want to give you an example of what I would call is a three ar archetypal examples of a single lens setup. When you are looking at an arrangement of a single object with a single lens like this, you will realize soon as you are doing different problems, there's really only three different types that you will see. Everything else fits into one of those three, except you know, with the different numerical values. So let me sketch all those three. So example one would be what, I, what we just did. This is the one that I like to think of as the standard case. This is where all the numbers are positive. Well, everything is positive. So this is example one. Um, so I have a converging lens. That's a, an important part. So focal, focal length f. And let me just draw focal point on both sides. I kind of need this one so that I can place the object correctly. The object that's placed um, out here, for example, it's placed in such a way that this object distance, DO, is greater than the focal length. This is case one. Let me do case two and three. I don't know if I'll have time to finish all three, but I will at least <laughs> tell you what those three cases are, since I'm telling you that there's no other type you need to worry about. Four single lens, anyway. If you, the multiple lens setup is what I want to talk about next time. So example two would deal with the same converging lens. So the lens has not changed. It's the same converging lens. I, let me try to draw it with the same, um, wow, that's, sorry, too ugly. Uh, all right. And let me try to draw it with the same focal length, more or less. So focal point here and here. So this is the focal length. Um, what do you think I will change to make this a qualitatively different example? Yeah, I mean, this was one condition you saw, right? So let's just negate it. <laughs> so DO must be now smaller than F. So let's say we have an object that's placed here inside the focal length. So DO is now smaller than F. So that's the second example. The third example is the one that Samuel was asking about. It's the example with the diverging lens. So, um, so I think uh, maybe we should start out with a diverging lens. Yeah, let's do it that way. I think that will probably be better. So the last and the third example is where you have a diverging lens. So uh, this is the diverging lens. And you can actually talk about focal length of a diverging lens. It may sound unintuitive, but let me just say that a diverging lens, it does have focal point. Let me just mark those focal points. And um, I guess we'll just talk more what happens as uh, we are dealing with this diverging lens. Everyone has, here has some sense of intuition for diverging lens? Yes? Um, so this is, I guess, a good place to check your intuition. If you had parallel rays coming in, how do you think uh, these parallel rays will go, will go after going through this diverging lens? They will diverge, right? <laughs> I mean, we call it diverging lens for a reason. So they will diverge. That's the property of diverging lens. Now, here's the thing that may not be, I don't know, intuitively obvious, but turns out to be true. These diverging rays, if they came from parallel rays, they will look like they are coming from a single point. They will look like they are coming from this point. That's the sense in which this is a focal point. No real rays will actually focus here. But if you had parallel rays coming in, as they go out, as you look at it from here, it will look like these rays came from point source here. So that's really the only thing in, uh, that the diverging lens is different from uh, converging lens with. 
But um, so let me uh, do this example quickly. So let's say I have an object, uh, uh, arrow that looks like this. Okay. So let me get rid of the other array that I'm apparently not using. So I've um, so the first thing I would do is find the principal array, and um, well, I already did that. So this is one of the principal arrays. The, if I'm doing ray tracing, then the other principal array would be um, would be the same as what I drew for the converging lens. It's the one going through the middle of the lens. The surfaces are still parallel, so you would get this ray to go straight through. And as you look at these two rays, you will see that they never cross each other, and they never will cross each other. I mean, since they come from this single point, that's the only place where they meet. But on this outgoing side, as you are looking at it, um, I mean, they, they are diverging. They will never come together. But as you are looking at it from this side, what you do notice is that these two rays, they look like they're coming from this point. So there's no any sharply focused image at this point. But as you're looking at it through the lens, it looks like the rays are coming from this point. So that's the location of the virtual image formed by this diverging lens. So you are going to have a virtual image here. That, so that's the tip of the arrow. So the rest of the arrow will look something like this. So you have a virtual image here. And, yeah? Is that something that you find in a microscope? In a microscope, it depends. Um, I don't know if you could make, you wouldn't find it in a microscope. You could find it in a telescope. With a telescope, you could make the eyepiece a diverging lens. You will see it in a lab a week from now. Yeah. So um, let, me, mm, let me label some of the variables and explain why this equation that we derived 1 over f is equal to 1 over d o plus 1 over d i is so important. This one equation applies to all three cases. It applies to even, even to this case. So uh, I mean, I can label all the distances. So let's say this is d o and this is d i. And you might think, I mean, why would that apply? That was for the converging lens. Um, to see it, I guess you kind of have to go through the geometry yourself, but this is how it would apply. These three distances, they obey this relationship. They will fit into this equation. Um, so one over, so if uh, this physical distance is f, then what you would use for focal length wouldn't be this f, but it will be the negative of that value. So 1 over minus f is equal to, the object is the same, so it's just the 1 over do. And the image distance, if this di is the physical distance di, positive value, then if this is plus 1 over minus di, then um, this equation will hold. I guess let me give you a quick example. Um, I, mm, this is the quickest example. The quickest example is where this object is infinitely far away. And let's say we said this focal distance was 10 centimeters. Then based on the drawing that we drew before, you, you want that image to form here, right? the 10 centimeters away, right? And imagine plugging numbers into here. So 1 over minus 10 is equal to 1 over infinity. Well, that's a 0. Plus 1 over minus 10. But it works. So what I will say is, in, um, so we need a little more time to go over this sign convention in more detail. Um, I think that's where I was supposed to introduce from examples one and two. Um, but so let me leave this example with this. You can do it this way. You can solve this uh, um, with um, starting out from this expression. 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 
1 over di. So we don't actually use it this way because all these signs, they get confusing. What we prefer to do is use the same equation in every case, except we have a sign convention that tells you when any one of these quantities are negative. So with the f, there's a sign convention. It's positive um, if converging. And it's negative if diverging. And with the image, we have this sign convention. The image distance, it's uh, positive. Um, how should I put it? Um, I don't want to say it's positive if it's, uh, uh, if it's real. I don't know if that's always true. You know, I think that might always be true. Well, uh, if I have to correct this later, I'll correct it later. I will introduce the full sign convention later. But for now, let's say this much. Image is positive if you are dealing with a real image. If a real image. And image distance is negative if we are dealing with a virtual image. So here, this image is virtual. Why is it virtual? Yeah, no two real rays intersected. It's just that this point looks like where this ray is coming from and where this ray is coming from, but they never actually intersected here. So in this case, the image distance is negative because it's a virtual, and the focal length is negative because it's diverging. Uh, I guess that's it. Um, <laughs> sorry. So let me leave this as an exercise for you. So when you apply this lens equation for, you know, we'll come back to this on Tuesday and we'll go through examples one and two as well. When you apply this equation, one over f is equal to one over do plus one over di, when you do it here, if this is true, you'll get image distance that's real. Do the algebra, you'll see. Here, if we use the exact same equation, do plus di, and go through the algebra, then you will get that given this condition, object distance is less than f, you'll find that the image distance is negative. And this time, it, the negative answer actually has physical meaning. What that means is you form the virtual image that's going to be on this side. Let me do the quick ray tracing so that you can see it. These are the two principal rays, this and this. You see that they diverge as they go out on this side, right? Imagine backtracking it in a straight line. They will cross here, and this is where that virtual image is. Yeah? So does that mean that if you were standing on the right side of that lens, it would look like it's over there? Yeah, it would look like it's coming from this point. So this is how magnifying glass works. The thing you are looking through, it looks bigger and actually farther away. Your eye does the rest of the work. As oh, this, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about. So we didn't get to the structure of the eye. Well, let's get to that on Tuesday. Okay. okay so I think that's all I have, or all I have time for. Um, 